One time they nearly they, they want to give me a, a, a name among the orang asli, you know. That shows they they, they like me. Hi, I'm David. Currently, I'm just serving in the missions department, and I'm also helping out in the English services. I normally, my normal routine every month is that on the first week of the month, I will be serving with the Orang Asli in, up in Camerons uh, for about a week or so. Then I come back, and then I'll then the rest for two weeks around there. I'll go to Sarawak to minister and to help in discipling with the locals in uh, Miri and Bintulu. I remember last year, early uh, January, uh, December actually, end of December, after Christmas, uh, Brother Sunny approached me to go make a trip down to visit Patimati Lam at Ipo to see how can I network and just go and recce the place, see what are the needs and how can we extend our hand. After visiting there, first trip and the second trip, that I came to a place where I realized that uh, a lot of the Orang Asli, they're, they're okay, but only thing they, they have this uh, a spiritual poverty, just like a nominal Christian, they go to church every Sunday, but not knowing how can they put God in their own life, in their family, in their workplace, to see God also uh, can use them and bless them and how they can grow in knowing God in a very personal way. So that is where when the work started actually. Before becoming a Christian, I always, always like people very much uh, because I grew up in a kampong, in a poor environment. So coming to Orang Asli, I was looking for opportunity actually. So when I went there, I had a peace of God in my heart knowing that this could be God's opening door for me to uh, go in into the Orang Asli. At the beginning stage, I always make this as a principle. Whenever I go to a new place, I go there as a student. I go there to learn about them, about their culture, about their beliefs, uh, about their structures. Wherever you go, uh, you need to be humble. You need to be interested with them. You need to love and like them. Once they, they see that you are interested in them, I think that's a good way for them to open up themselves too. One of the things that I see is wonderfully that, that now they can memorize scripture. You know, they've never done that before. It was difficult, you know, the lady, when I asked her to memorize a scripture, I gave her 10 minutes, she literally cried. She said, you cannot, I say, don't cry, you never try, you don't know. Just try and see how far you can go. If you, if you can't complete one sentence, at least you try. And thank God, after 10 minutes, she was able to memorize one scripture. Not only that, she was able to apply that word and begin to pray through that word. And see, life began to change gradually. I remember I was teaching about tithing. One, one brother, God spoke to me. He was convicted, though maybe a security job, but God gave him a good job. And the first salary, he gave me a love offering. I was so encouraged. No, it's not so much of the money, but it was a step of believing that, that the word is true and God is speaking the truth. My greatest desire is to see that the Orang Asli will rise up, that they will be an example, that they will challenge the other Orang Aslis among their own community, so that their own people will know that God is also true, not only to Americans, not only to us here in Joe Baru, but to the Orang Asli, that God can be real to them too. <laughs>